Hello, hello, this is Controlled Pairs with Controlled Pairs Gaming, and we have liftoff. Once again, thank you guys for tuning into my video today. We are bringing you part three in the moon drilling mini series that I have been putting on. Today, we are taking our Mooner Fueler up to the moon in order to transfer fuel to it and then use it as a refueling station. This is all part of the new mechanics that were introduced in Kerbal Space Program 1.0 that allow you to mine for ore, turn that ore into liquid fuel, aquadizer, uh, excuse me, oxidizer, and monopropellant, and then transport between spacecrafts. If you haven't seen parts one or two of my videos, uh, go ahead and click on the links right now and you can check out those uh, before you get into this one. So we're fast forwarding through a lot of the initial orbital mechanics in the launch phase here. As you can see, we've already taken off. We've gotten into a circularized orbit around Kerbin. We've conducted our transfer burn. We have arrived at the moon and now we are performing our capture burn. I showed this part in particular because now you see the rover, the fueler here, detaching from its cruise phase, switching into a VTOL vessel. And I actually have to change the point of control from the uh, front command module there to the one located on top of the vessel and that allows us then to orient retrograde and continue our capture burn uh, and then uh, continue our orbital mechanics here now we speed it up again as we fast forward around to the other side of the moon and start tinkering with this maneuver node a bug that I've discovered is when you are focused on the moon rather than your vessel or an, or an orbital body rather than your own vessel and you tell the game to fast forward to the next maneuver node, you actually fast forward past it. So that's kind of what happened here, which doesn't matter too much because I'm actually trying to fast forward a little bit in order to uh, be able to conduct my landing in the sunrise so that I can do all of our stuff on the ground during the day. So we do fast forward. I set my burn up so that we will be coming down directly over our moon drilling site. And here we are now lowering down from high lunar orbit to our moon drilling site. If you remember from my first and second videos, the moon fueler was initially supposed to be piloted by three different Kerbals. I ended up trading that for an unmanned vessel because I was having some issues with the center of mass and rather than try to put that big command capsule on top of this thing in order to get a center of mass, I, uh, I opted to just leave it unmanned and uh, actually increase the efficiency as a result. So I'm pretty happy with it. It still looks kind of clunky, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty well. So here we are carefully lowering ourselves down into the crater that we are so familiar with from our previous video. As a VTOL, the rover has actually turned out to work particularly effectively. Uh, it's very, very easy to control. And it's actually a lot of fun to fly. And this is the first VTOL that I've made that's actually left Kerbin and conducted a landing like this and then turned into a rover. So I'm pretty happy with it. So here we carefully lower ourselves to the ground and we have touched down. A nice soft landing. We're a couple hundred meters away from our moon drill. So we'll go ahead and fast forward as we get caught up here. Retract those solar panels and zoom on over. Now that we are on the ground, the goal is to dock up with the moon drill and start transferring fuel. So we switch over to our moonar drill. We retract our solar panels and identify exactly where that docking port is. If you recall from part two of this series, we tested the docking port on the surface of Kerbin with uh, some pretty good success. So now here we are on the moon attempting to execute that docking maneuver once again. And alas, as the fueler slowly but surely approaches the moon drill, gets it nice and lined up, we discover that, unfortunately, the docking port is just a little bit too short. Can you believe that? After all that work and all that testing, we run into this silly little problem where we just cannot get solid contact between these two vessels. So I speed it up. This is kind of embarrassing. I ended up 
going back and forth and trying all sorts of different stuff. I retracted the um, the drill and I retracted the solar panels. I manipulated the landing legs, uh, activating the um, uh, the shocks and then deactivating them. I went forward and backward. I used the RCS. I used the engines. I was trying to figure out what I could do in order to make this thing work. And finally, I think I managed to figure it out. And um, I, I don't know how I'm going to fix this in the long run. I think I'm just going to need to relocate the Mooner drill and try to get it on more flat ground and see if that works a little better. Um, but for now, I, I did manage to make this thing work. I, uh, I lined it up, and you see me basically docking like you would in orbit on the ground. So I'm looking at my nav ball on the bottom. I'm trying to line up my reticle with the um, with my target, which is the docking port to the front on the on the moon uh, drill. Um, I activate the engines and I'm using the RCS as well to try to angle this thing correctly. And it really is like doing an orbital docking maneuver on the ground. It's a, a complete pain in the butt. Um, but I'm just glad that I finally made it work. And it's hilarious to watch because you see my front wheel is completely off the ground, at least a few inches. And so I'm, I'm hovering here and uh, just trying to make it work, man. And we have good contact. I cut the engines and we are successfully on the ground, docked with our Mooner drill on the surface of the moon. All those testing phases finally have paid off and we are successfully up here with Jebediah Kerman, who is probably getting a little bit claustrophobic in that tiny lander can. <laughs> So, now that we're up here, we're going to test it and make sure that everything works just right. Go ahead and extend those solar panels. Since we had to retract the other two in order to dock successfully, now we can extend the ones that are on our rover, on our fueler, and continue to soak up that lovely sunlight. <laughs> Next, we're going to go ahead and deploy that drill and we're going to activate the ISRU converter and generate liquid fuel and oxidizer. That drill has been active since we parked the moon drill up here and as a result, it's collected just over 270 ore. So now we're converting that ore into liquid fuel and oxidizer. We fast forward a little bit and, uh, and expedite the process of converting that ore into liquid fuel and oxidizer. And, and it's pretty efficient. I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this thing has ended up performing. So, once we get rid of all that ore and turn it all into liquid fuel and oxidizer, we go ahead and uh, start the process of transferring it to the fueler. Fortunately, with the updates, um, Kerbal has gotten a lot better about balancing fuel on your ships, which, um, which was incredibly helpful here. So, transfer the fuel on over. It turns out they already filled that center tank completely for me, which is outstanding. And we go ahead and top off those two tanks and now it's a balancing act between my fueler's fore tank and its rear tank i'm trying to make a match and uh and, and basically uh just uh make sure that center of mass uh stays exactly where it needs to be so i don't end up flipping over if i activate my engines of course i'm not actually going to be using this fueler until it is completely topped off and my goal is of the three tanks on that fueler use using one to get into orbit using one to transfer to another vessel and then returning back to the surface and redocking with the final tank of fuel. Uh, so while I might not be refueling any, you know, interstellar carriers, I can certainly extend the range of some of my smaller SSTOs, which is exactly why I constructed this base and opted to um, use this technique. So all in all, I'm really excited about it. I think it looks really, go uh, really good. I love getting down on the surface of the moon and cruising around and doing all of this, uh, this fun stuff. So it's fun to see your designs actually pay off after all that hard work. So if you enjoyed the video today, please show it by leaving a comment or liking the video. Of course, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I greatly appreciate it. In our next episode, we're going to bring an SSTO up and put it in orbit and actually refuel it. This is Controlled Pairs, signing off.